Hi, everybody. My name is Beth Day, and I'm with Rise Asset Development. And I have to say, I'm very encouraged. I just came from across town from the uh, Mental Health uh, Commission of Canada's um, conference on reducing employment barriers for people living with mental illness. So this is now two conferences on employment that I've been to where people are actually talking about self-employment. So I'm here to represent the intersection of entrepreneurship and mental health. Uh, so you can see from the screen what we do at RISE. Um, we are a national nonprofit currently operating in Ontario but looking to expand. So uh, I'd love to have conversations with uh, any of you later on. So uh, RISE has been around since 2009, so my lifetime, Megan. <laughs> um, and uh, we were founded through a partnership between the Rotman family and by extension the Rotman School of Management at U of T and CAMH. Um, started off when Mrs. Rotman actually um, approached her husband and said there are a lot of people out there in this world who have been involved at CAMH and can't or don't want to hold down a full-time job. What are we going to do about it? And that's really how it started. So the core of what we do, and, and I know most of you are working in employment, but I think um, based on, on uh, the comments from Wendy that, that it's important for people to know what's going on in the self-employment area too. So I don't need to tell you about these statistics. In fact, um, a, a, across town at the, uh, at the M Mental Health Commission uh, conference today, the statistic that came out was that by the time we are 40, one in two has experienced some form of, of mental health uh, challenges. So that's, those are the people that we, that we work with at RISE. So who is a RISE entrepreneur? It's someone who is considering self-employment as a way to creating meaningful employment for themselves. Um, we work with people who it, they have to self-declare that they have some form of mental health or addiction challenge and that they can't get help from a traditional bank. So, so uh, you know, if your bank can lend you money to start a business, you probably don't need the services of RISE. Um, you may be interested to know that the average age of people that we serve is 40 and that the majority are on some form of Ontario Works, ODSP, something like that. And they do report to us that that reliance, that, that they, can, they can not necessarily get off, but reduce their reliance on those kinds of supports. So just quickly, what we do, we do, uh, we have a couple of different training programs to help people who have an idea of a business turn it into a business plan. So we have one directed at youth and one non-youth, we call it our peer program. Um, and those are sort of month-long programs that involve a combination of classroom work, working with coaches and mentors to put together a business plan and, and launch the business. Uh, we operate in six cities across Ontario with a partnership model. So my colleague Elle is here from, from Causeway. And uh, those of you who were here earlier this afternoon would have heard the great story from uh, one of her clients who um, <clears throat> had a really great story of, of starting her own business after experiencing challenges. So those are the kinds of people that we work with and I'm glad that she was able to come here this afternoon. So the other piece that I wanted to talk to you about is just how we measure our impact. There's a lot of talk about how, how we measure impact, how we talk to our funders about what we do. And, and so I just put this slide together to show you that, that there are a number of things that we measure at RISE to talk about the impact of what we do. So obviously we can talk about the number of people we put through our training programs. We can talk about the number of people that we lend, we can talk about the amount of money that we lent out, which is a million dollars. We just passed that a couple months ago, so that was big. Um, but we also work really hard to think about and measure the, some of the softer skills, uh, some of the softer impacts, and, and those would be soft skills like confidence and time management and financial literacy, the things that people learn by working with us. Um, the, so those are sort of the shorter terms, and we, we, we make sure that all of our clients work directly with mentors and have access to networking events. So developing support networks is important. Uh, over the medium term, we measure things like interpersonal skills and job creation. We don't, it's, it's not one of our biggest metrics, but we do look at that. 
um, and, and meaningful employment. And I put employment in there because, I'll be honest with you, we spend a lot of time teaching people about entrepreneurship and helping them to start businesses, but they don't all keep running the businesses. Some of them write us after a couple of years while they're still paying their loans back and say, ah, actually, I got a job. And that's a good thing, too. So um, there's, a, there's a lot of benefit to what we do. And um, over the long term, you know, we're, we're actually doing some work with a couple of different organizations right now to measure some of the longer term impact like social inclusion and increase in quality of life for people with mental health challenges. So um, it's a really neat organization. Um, we are looking to expand across the country, as I said, currently working in Ontario. Uh, but uh, we firmly believe that there are uh, other communities across the country that see the need for helping people beyond the training stage to help them actually start a business. So that is what we do. Um, I'm here the rest of today and tomorrow, and I'll look forward to uh, speaking with as many of you as possible. Thank you. Thank you.